Hello everybody and welcome to a new case study. This is the Cavern Door family. It has been inspired by a client called Alumel. They're based in Greece and they make windows and doors, uh, mostly in Europe. And this client came to me with a complicated problem. They have this uh, door slash window that has an angle on the side that merge into an arc. So they asked me if it was possible to create a parametric family that has both the angle and the arc on top. And it turns out that you can using a few tricks and with the smart use of reference lines. Uh, let's go to the family type parameters here and let's start playing with a few dimensions. Uh, we have the width. In this case, it's the whole, the whole uh, width of the, the window, the door. And we have W2 and W3, which you can see on the elevation what exactly that means. Let's start playing with these dimensions a little bit. Let's change the overall width. Uh, let's change the W2 value. Okay. And the H value, let's try changing that and you will see that uh, the arc shape will be adjusted. So you can see that the whole parametric family works. Maybe there are certain limits to the dimensions. Uh, but the principle here, I'm not necessarily going to show every single step, but the principle is to create the opening using uh, reference lines. So I will create a new door family. So first I will make the wall much bigger since this is kind of a huge uh, door. I will make the height uh, much bigger value. Same thing for the width. Let's make it uh, 7,000. Now I'm going to create a few more reference planes. One over here, another there, one here, one there. And I'm going to create EQ dimensions relatively to the center. Uh, let's add this one. There we go and there we go. I'm just going to base this on what I've previously created. So W3 is in the middle and W2 more to the sides. So this one is going to be called W3. And this one is going to be called W2. And now if I look at this, there are also a different height. So there's the main uh, height parameter, but we need two additional reference planes as well. So one about here, one about here. And if I look at this, um, there's an H value and a central offset. So let's start by creating the H value. So I will create a parameter called H. You could use a more descriptive value for the parameter name, but I like using only one letter and makes creating formulas a little bit easier. There we go and create another one over here that is going to be called central offset. And once again, I can just play with a few dimensions to make sure that everything works properly. Seems to be the case. Let's play with W2. All right, all good. And so let's look at this again. And we see that uh, we create a straight diagonal line that goes to the first intersection. And then we create this arc. So let's go to the create tab and use the reference line tool. I'm just going to draw it like this. Then I select the arc line, click over here. I create my arc using the reference line tool. I can select the straight line again and click over there. So you can see that I've created a chain of reference line. Uh, although right now, if I try to use the family as is, it will not properly work. You can see that uh, the top of the arc uh, doesn't keep its value. So I will select the arc and click here to create uh, a dimension label. So this is the radius of the arc. I will create a new value that I will call calculated radius. And now I need to get the formula for this calculated radius. You can search online for it. I've actually used ChatGPT and asked the question directly and it got me that. 
So this is the formula. Actually, it would simply copy and paste it right there in the formula. You can do the same thing. I'll put it in the description of this video. And just make sure that the name of the parameters is the same. And you can see the value turns gray because of the formula. And now when I modify this value, uh, the radius should automatically follow. Same thing if I modify any of these values. W3 doesn't have any impact on this. Let's try with this one. There we go. You can see that the radius promptly follows. And now I must modify the opening cut. So this is the opening cut. It is currently kind of square shaped. I will edit the sketch, use pick line, click on the reference lines and click on the lock icon just like this. And there I have my opening. As you can see here, let's change the scales. We have better visibility. You can try changing a few values to make sure this properly works. Let's say 8,000. You can see everything is adjusted. So this seems to work. Uh, so for the rest, you can just use this and use the reference lines as uh, guides to create your mullions and your glass in case you want an opening like this. So I'm not going to go through all of the steps. You can use the extrusion tool or the sweep tool and using these reference lines uh, to help you create your geometry. So thank you very much. This video is an excerpt from Bimpure Herrick Family's course for Revit. This course includes hundreds of helpful tips to turn you into a Revit Family Mega Master. All lessons are included both as videos and text and images format. You can download a complete ebook PDF. It includes tips about the family editor, unleashing formulas, understanding nested and shared families, arrays, mastering the visibility in graphics, preparing the family for the end user, and many more Revit Family's topics. It also includes helpful case studies and tips added throughout the year. In addition, you get access to replays of live masterclasses about advanced family concepts. Finally, it includes the Herrick family sample file, as well as collections of Revit windows and doors. Enroll now at bimpure.com.